It is never not funny to me when you get a cutscene in Breath of the Wild that's like, oh my gosh, we are running out of time, Calamity Ganon is returning, and in my mind, I'm like, great, cool cutscene. I am going to go back to upgrading all of my armor and completing all the side quests and hunting for Korok seeds. I'm so sorry, Zelda. I do love you with my whole gay little heart, but I have completionist to do. Hey, I'm Lizard Lee, and you didn't come here for Breath of the Wild hot takes. You came here to watch me do some cosplay stuff. So today we're going to be making a Korok seed inspired bag for an upcoming cosplay of mine. Honestly, I've wanted to cosplay a Korok for like two years at this point, so this cosplay is a very long time coming. So in Breath of the Wild, uh, one of the ways that you expand your inventory is by finding these little forest spirit critters named Koroks. Um, you find them and they have little puzzle mini games and they give you a seed. I found out recently that the seed is actually supposed to be their poop. So it's little golden tree, I guess, um, which is very fun. As a diehard completionist, as someone who will ignore the main storyline of a game for like three years as I have done in Breath of the Wild. I love the Korok seeds, I love hunting and getting all of the little gremlins in any given area on the map, and I definitely knew that I wanted to cosplay these. You know, when you're at a convention and you realize that you've forgotten to think about a place to put your con badge and your phone, that's a bad time. I have been doing this too long, I know by now that thinking about where I'm gonna put those essentials I need to have on me is like a step one for engineering a cosplay. I also really love doing little like giveaways at cons, like having things to hand out, and because you collect Korok seeds from the Koroks, I thought it would be really fun to give Korok seeds to people. So I went on Poshmark and I found this little wicker purse. Um, wicker is lightweight. It is something that's like hard that you can build onto. I think this was $12. It's a Forever 21 purse. I think that's all I have to say. We're gonna turn this little guy into another little guy for me to cosplay a little guy. So, you know, yeah, ha, ha you found me. Let's go. I totally jump in. I'm gonna take a second and try and make like half a game plan. So I'm gathering my materials, like the fabric I'm gonna use for the rest of this cosplay, and also taking a second to sketch what a Koryx seed bag would even look like. I keep my sketches pretty rough because honestly, I know I'm going to change it as I work. This is just a jumping off point, so I'm not totally leaping into the abyss while I'm destroying this purse. I was gonna do a whole system where I had the strap come back under and I attach it in multiple places, but honestly, looking at this now, like this isn't going anywhere. If I pull in it as hard as I can, it's not moving. So I'm just gonna glue down this here. And then the next step is gonna be me covering this in some kind of like soft and squishy fabric so that it doesn't look as hard as it actually is. Um, I'm gonna cut here actually. How straight, how straight can I cut this line? Is the straightness of the line I can cut proportional to the lack of straightness in me? It seems to be, because we got a nice straight line over here. Didn't fall, made it happen. Really helps smooth out the bumpy bottom. No one wants a bumpy bottom. Or no, it's soggy. Soggy is the one we don't want. We don't want the soggy bottom. I am drafting like the world's fastest pattern going off of the purse's measurements. Luckily a cylinder is a pretty simple shape, and since the fabric is stretchy and I'm probably going to step it with batting later, I also know I can definitely get away with the pattern not being completely perfect. I'm using a stretch faux suede for this part of the purse. Honestly, all of these fabrics I'm going to talk about way more once I'm actually making the cosplay, so for now, I am just yoinking from what I already have. We've got all of these guys cut out. We've got the little bottom panel cut out. Um, I could start pinning them, but I'm kind of in a zone with cutting and that is usually something I hate. So I'm gonna ride that wave. Um, I'm going to cut this out of the like kind of wool fabric. Uh, remembering I need to add seam allowances around there. What else do I need to cut? I 
I tried making bias tape with these and I just should have known that, you know, I it's wool. It's wool. Wool doesn't turn into bias tape. You want something like cotton that will press and hold the shape. So instead, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to make tiny little foam rectangles, um, spray adhesive them and wrap this around them. And that's what those little lace details are going to be. Um, I'm worried about the stretchiness of the fabric looking kind of weird and puckery, but you know, it's going to be, Ooh, Oh wait. Oh my gosh. Amazing. If I just glue them on after I put the stuffing in them, then it won't pull weirdly on them. So with the making bias tape failure behind me, I am breaking out that hot glue gun to make those little fake laces because I will always be the kind of person to get distracted making little details when I still have like the whole rest of the cover to actually make. Once these are done and looking very satisfying, then I can actually get back to, you know, making the purse cover. So while we're hanging out, like what are your hot Zelda tips? What are, what's your thing in Breath of the Wild that you're like, dang, I wish I'd known that before. My thing is farming for rupees. Like I am all about Pondo's Lodge. I get in the zone and I will just grind there and make a few K. Um, that is my, that is my pro strat is I treat rupees in this game like they're nothing, like they're dust. Pray for me because if this seam is wonka donk, um, we're we're gonna have some issues. Yeah, we're skipping some stitches. How can I fix that? Is there a way to fix that? Let me Google it. I'm guessing it's the needle. Um, ooh, there it is. Okay, look at the first row versus the last row. Amazing. Um, great. So I'm ready to start sewing the cover together. Let's go. Hourly mistakes that I've made update. <laughs> um, mistake number one is that I looked at this beautiful uh, guy and I flipped it over and I said, oh no, oh my God, because I had not checked the tension, I guess, on the other side. And these seams are like, they are just not gonna get the job done for the amount of stretching I'm going to ask this piece to do. So I am gonna have to sew over some of these seams. Um, mistake number two, not mistake thing that I like, I should know by now to check for. And I was like, no, I'm working fast. Um, is that I didn't realize that this actually on top of the like front backside has a slight directionality to it, the way the suede will lay. And I am trying to like angle it. Yeah, you can, you can maybe see it there that I was not at all paying attention to. I feel like these two mistakes kind of cancel each other out because the fact that I'm just gonna have to redo these seams real quick means that I may as well seam rip some of these guys and get like an intentional pattern. I think what I'm gonna go for is having um, the directionality be alternating so every other panel is going upside down so that it just looks a little more interesting. Great, okay, time to do some seam ripping and soon we can start actually getting stuff on. I did finish re-sewing this um, guy here, which does look very cool. You can sort of see now that it does actually have the alternating nap going different ways. Before I get too far with the cover though, I do need to make the replacement shoulder strap. I tried a few things that didn't work, but what does end up working is grabbing some nylon webbing I've got lying around and wrapping it in this dark wool fabric. Shout out to Spray and Based for literally saving my whole entire life. Okay, so we're done with the shoulder strap and honestly, y'all, I really love how it turned out. It looks very subtle. Like if you look at this, it could look like trim that you bought. Um, now that this is all done, it is time to figure out how long I want the strap to be and stitch it on the buckles. And then we can move on to more fun and exciting things because the night is moving on. Here she is. She is set. She is functional. She is not my cutest work, but that's okay because I just need this to like exist.
Okay, so let us not rest on our laurels too much because we have next steps. Our next step is gonna be figuring out if I want to put any um, batting in here. I do need to figure out the split on the side here um, where that little bit to let the buckle come in. I'm not wordsing very well. It's getting kind of late and I've been working for a while. Just call me lizard in the morning. That's what time it is. <laughs> That's my joke. So it is morning. Hi, hello. It's really overcast today, um, but I promise it is the morning. Um, I'm gonna back it up a little bit because I have a feeling that nighttime lizard was like saying some things. We'll see what we have time for. I started thinking about the Black Eyed Peas song, Where is the Love? I, I'm gonna wrangle this guy up here and we're gonna get it under control. And like, you know, some things as a child you look at and you're like, this will make sense when I'm older. That was one of those songs for me. I was like, a lot of this doesn't totally make sense, but maybe it'll make sense when I get older. I just went for my stash of Haribo bears, so like, that's where we're at. Why the f*** did they put the CIA and the Bloods and the Crips in the same verse? Why are they saying people are addicted to the drama at the same time as they're talking about terrorism? Nothing in that song makes any sense. I have no idea what I was saying back there, so in case it was hot nonsense, um, last night I stopped at the point where I had finished covering the bottom of the little bag. I know I want to get those bottom like fake laces on first, because E6000 can take a while to cure, which is what I'm going to use to attach them. After that, I'm going to move on to finishing the foam sculpt for the top, the kind of faux, oh my gosh, what's that word? Words. Cuff. Uh, the little faux cuff on the top, I'm gonna be sculpting that out of foam. At some point in there, when I'm feeling like I need a kind of motivational boost, I'm gonna switch into doing the little flappy bit because I'm excited about that and I think it's gonna look cute. Um, and okay, that's the plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take out this tea bag. Oh no, oh no, it's been too long. Um, and then I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna start working on the little decorative flap. My plan for this is that I am going to interface some of the like poly blend shantung I have that I bought for accents. Once I get that like Girl Scout badge circle all done, um, I have already, before I started this project, spent some time in Photoshop, uh, taking the little cork seed icon from the map and smoothing it out as best as I can. It is not perfect. I am not someone who has spent any amount of time honing my like vectorization craft, but with how tiny this is gonna be, it's totally gonna get the job done just fine. And as I interface this little bit, know that yes, I am using the Cricut to cut this circle. Tracing a spool is totally valid, but I am lazy and it's so much less stress to just let the machine do it for me. So the thing I just ran into with trying to make this work is honestly like both very illustrative of general life advice and also a pro strat for Breath of the Wild. I was trying to figure out a way to make like machine stitching some kind of like Girl Scout embroidered edge happen on this fabric. It was really not behaving how I wanted to. The stitches were like falling in the hole too much. They were too tense. They were too loose. They didn't look even. It was too much maneuvering. And sometimes in life, like you can really, really try at something, but you gotta know when to be like, this is actually the wrong method that I'm looking at here. Same thing in Breath of the Wild. Sometimes you're like, I'm just not getting the timing right. I'm just not getting the timing right. I need to like jump right and hit this button at this time. And it's like, no, actually you should be using another ability. I thought about, do I leave the edge raw? Do I fray check the edge? I tested the fray check. It was not gonna work. It totally stained the fabric. Then I realized, what about hand embroidery? So I revisited some embroidery floss that I had initially said, I don't wanna use this cause it's a little too gold. But I realized since I was going with a very gold um, little design for the icon, it would be okay to have a spot of gold in this, the one spot in the whole build where there will be gold. So I'm gonna be doing some very loose little hand embroidery and that way I can also attach it directly to the flap itself before I sew that down. 
great things are happening. We're gonna, we're gonna keep trucking and it looks so cute, honestly, every time I look at that little flap, I'm like, oh my gosh. Zelda, she's here. I feel her in the Arby's chilies. Oh my God. It is not uh, my most precise work by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but you know, I don't think the Koraks were a people that valued precision. <laughs> I don't know why, but my brain is just dead set on like everything that happens in this project, thinking about it like it's also gaming advice. Um, in this case, I decided after like fighting with it for a really long time and trying a lot of different things that I was just gonna rip out the top stitching. Um, it wasn't looking good. I had tried to sew it a hundred different ways. So I just got rid of it. You can always just nope out of things. I remember the first time I paraglided onto Eventide Island and I thought, oh, this will be a fun hour. It was not, and I left. It's okay to nope out of stuff. I did eventually go back and do Eventide Island, but like there were a few attempts there where I tried and eventually was like, no, I'm gonna go cook things and that's okay. I am popping back in to say it is so important to my health that you know that this fabric I'm using for the cuff is from my stash from like 2011 for my Final Fantasy IX cosplay. Oh gosh, there he is back at Otakon, the long past glory days. Uh, this fabric is from that era. This is the stopping point I have found myself at, which I am wildly excited about. I think this looks so cute. I think it looks really clean. I love the way the colors look. It's basically exactly what I sketched. My last thing that I need to do that I know is going to be a little time intensive and also take brain cells that I do not have right now is making the top kind of basket part of all the little seeds stacked up. So I learned my lesson and didn't quite work as late as I did the night before, but still got started making this hollow base for the seed top. I'm just using foam and warbler scraps to make something the seeds can go on top of. I also pulled some fairy lights from my stash that I'm gluing down along the edge here. I'm not trying to make a big bright LED project, I'm just trying to add a very subtle glow to this prop. Then in the morning, it's gonna be time to make some seeds. Oh my gosh, it has taken me literally like all day just to get this much done. I will show it to you. Um, so here we have where the purse is right now. So this is gonna be a very fun and spicy recording because I guarantee you at many points, I will like burn myself a little bit on camera. The reason why I'm not wearing like heat safe gloves with this is that this thermoplastic, when it overheats even just a little bit, it can get really sticky. And the first time I ever used this method, I did ruin a brand new pair of like heat safe gloves. So this is a method that as far as I know was invented by my friend Becca. Uh, the method is that you use these Warbla crystal pellets um, and you heat them up and you, instead of, you know, forming them and then painting them, you actually put loose artist pigment in the Warbla itself. What this does is it means that the color is like never going to chip, it's never going to go anywhere in the same way that paint would. And it also gives a really cool, like, I, I think it makes things look kind of luminous, honestly. Um, I love it for metallics, I love it for gems. Oh, that's a good looking one, actually. Sorry, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Time is, time is of the essence. Wow. Sorry, I like, I just think they look really good. So this is not really great for like precision stuff. It's definitely best for things that you want to look like a little natural. The material also, unlike regular Warbler that you can kind of reheat all the way through, once this material cools, if you have it in like a sphere, it is really not gonna wanna reheat. There's a very small window of time where the thermoplastics are not so hot, they will burn you but not so cool that they are unworkable. It's basically a QT event, honestly. It's like when you fly up in the air and you need to pull out your bow in Breath of the Wild and hit the target. It's very stressful, it's very high stakes. I am trying to not fuck up my healing mat also with heat, which is why I am doing the heating in this bowl. Oh no. 
past the dex save, it does give you a very like, like data TNG thingy effect. Once I get this pancake like ready, um, that will be a, a time is of the essence moment where I am, I think it's that moment, um, where I'm putting this in the center and I'm wrapping up the sides like a little dumpling. I have to stop calling them poop because I have mentioned that to my friends. I forget it's not like common knowledge that canonically they are poop and people are like, what the fuck do you mean you're making a basket of poop? That's our guy, that's the one we just did. I should point out while we're here, you can see how nice these look. Um, a general piece of advice, if you're doing something where there's even the slightest chance that you have no clue what you were doing and there could be catastrophic failure um start with the back so i started with these ones on the back and they look fine but i definitely learned a lot in making these and i'm very glad that i had that practice by the time i got to the front out here if you're gonna give this method a try i would definitely recommend you know giving yourself uh time and space and permission to not get it right at first because it really is just kind of a, a thing you need to work with a little bit and get the hang of how the material cools, how the material handles, what kinds of shapes you can and can't make with it. The great news is that this really and truly is our very last step in this purse. Once I am done with this last little stack of seeds, then it'll be totally done. Woo! Woo! Ow! Woo! Woo! It's so comedic thinking that I really thought this was gonna be a one day build, but you know, it was still a very fast build and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Hey, we made it, we did the darn thing. We have our beautiful little bag full of cork seeds. Actually, let me turn on the light so that we can enjoy the full, the full spectacle here. I love how the magnetic closure is just really, really easy to, <gasps> yes, 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 um, open and close. So I don't want to rest on my laurels too much because, oh my gosh, I still have the whole rest of this cosplay to make, basically. But I will take a second and say, hey, I'm proud of how this turned out. I think it looks really neat. Just for funsies, I'm going to throw up here the initial kind of sketch that I did in Procreate planning out this bag because I think it's really neat how close they look to each other. I really hope you enjoyed following me in this process. It was like the first time I feel like I was actually fully documenting the full start to finish process of like, here's my idea, here's how I think it's gonna work, and then all of the different kind of like twists and turns as materials did or didn't cooperate, as timelines did or didn't actually manifest, <laughs> um, to end up with a finished bag that I'm really proud of. I wish I could chat more, but honestly, I have so much more sewing to do on the whole rest of this cosplay. We've got some clothes to make, we've got some props to make, we're gonna keep on trucking, and that means that I'm going to say farewell for now. I will see you next week, and thank you so much for joining me here. And hey, I am still a very, very young channel, so truly from the bottom of my heart, subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing this video with your friends, telling me in the comments if you liked this, if you want to see more of this, what other designs you want to see me get started on. It really helps me out a ton. I want to keep doing this. I hope you want to keep joining me. I will see you next week. 
Yahaha! You found me!